In this video, we'll run through the process of rapidly setting up and proving an IoT link onto the Things network, and on the way, discuss some of the basic concepts involved in IoT radio links. In my normal manner, I will now add the caveat that it's currently early 2017 and that this presentation is likely to be out of date before it's even been uploaded. There are already many similar introductions online for Arduino and Raspberry Pi based things. So here, I want to present what I consider to be one of the simplest and quickest routes to establish a link. Once it's in place, it can be used to test and experience some of the factors and parameters that occur during normal operation and to look at some of the problems that may arise. It's not the cheapest option, but avoids many of the pitfalls that occur when constructing a homebrew kit and compiling contributed software. It can also be used as a solid foundation onto which to build larger and more complex systems. Here, I'm using the Multitech M.0 development board, and the reason for this is that it is already a single, small, standalone board that is easily connected to any machine that has a USB connection. There is no need for any special software, just a standard terminal emulator, and here I'm using TerraTerm as an example on this Windows-based video editing system. This room is gently bathed in radio signals, but if you are any distance from a gateway, it will be necessary to connect an antenna. I've purchased this one with a UFL connector, as later we're going to show how to perform link measurement performances with it. Connect the M dot. The LEDs illuminate and your machine should be prompted into action. It's not possible to provide an exact instruction at this stage, as the settings will vary from machine to machine depending on each individual configuration. The M dot will cause two serial ports to appear. Use trial and error to select the port that when set to 115,200 produces a response when the keys are repeatedly pressed. 115,200 is the default board rate, as it's known, of the M dot. Select it and confirm by pressing OK. Tap a few keys and enter again to try to stimulate a response from your system. Just entering AT followed by the Enter key should produce the OK response on the screen to prove that all is working. AT is short for attention, and the commands we're using here go way back to the 60s, where computers were massive, turning these things on and the streetlights dimmed. They were also expensive, so distant connections were made via telephone lines using modems. Modems were needed as telephone lines were designed to carry voices and not computer data. Modems were used to convert computer signals into audio tones to travel down the line to be converted back at the other end. This did not happen at 115,200 port rate or any speed quite like it, but at 110, 300, 600, 1200 bits per second. In the 60s, 19,200 bits per second was the very fastest rate quoted in the specification that worked over just 50 feet. <laughs> Happy days. Anyway, back to the present and our 115,200 link to the M dot. Our challenge is similar, to communicate with a distant location. All we've done here is to replace the modem with the M dot, replace the phone line with a radio link, and the remote end is a gateway, which is then connected to one or more computers, probably via the internet, which we now call the cloud. We can factory refresh the M dot by entering the command AT ampersand F and reset it by entering ATZ. We can see all of the internal settings by entering AT ampersand V. And by the end of this video, you'll appreciate what most of these mean. But let's get it working before the explanation. Device ID is the equivalent of a MAC address on a network card. In fact, I don't know why it's not called that here as it would simplify things. As a tip, never be tempted to modify this as it's burnt into the chip during manufacture. Frequency band here, EU, for the European region, and 868 is the 868 MHz that we're using at present. There are several differing options around the world. Frequency subband is ignored in Europe as it's part of the US option. Public network. Well, the Things network is very public, so this should be on. Just enter AT plus PN equals 1 if it says it's off. Startup mode. Well, command is the mode we're currently using. You would not see this screen if we were in any other specification. Now this bunch here are the variables used on the network. 
If you need another parallel, then these are like the IP addresses for the M dot. The keys are needed for security settings that we'll cover later. Network join mode. M dots can avoid LoRaWAN entirely and be configured to connect in what is known as a peer to peer mode. We cover those in a separate video, but the LoRaWAN standard we are concerned with here have OTAA, over the air activation, and AVP, activation by personalization. The default is OTA. If it isn't stated here, then enter AT plus NJM equals one to change it. Only two other values matter here at present. Join byte order must be set to MSB. Enter AT plus JBO equals one if it's not. By default, it is set to LSB, which will not work so it must be changed. Encryption, however, is on by default. And again, enter AT plus ENC equals one if it isn't. Enter ATMV to verify the change. Enter AT ampersand W to save all of these options and we are done. Now head onto the internet and thethingsnetwork.org. If you do not already have one, set up an account. Confirm your details in the email they send you. Once set up, you can return and log into your console. Before you can add details about a node, you need to set up an application. This is fairly easy. Select applications from either of these two links. Add the requested details of your choosing into the first two fields. The application ID field is limited to 32 characters and will not accept capitals. The site will generate an application EUI. So let's be lazy and use that option. These green dots confirm the contents of each field are acceptable and the green Add Application button illuminates to encourage us to move forward. So press it to reveal this. I do like these designs with their active live fields confirming activity like this timer. Now we can register our device and we can be lazy here. The fact that device ID is immutable confirms that it is the important reference used across the Things Network site. I'd like to add device EUI here, but it appears to shun my typing. It doesn't matter, we can change it later. So accept the default until this fault is cleared. Let's be lazy again and allow the site to generate an app key and we can see the app EUI here. Again, the green register button illuminates to seduce us forward. So press it to reveal this page, the device overview. It's titled with my name immutable and the activation method is confirmed as OTAA. So far, so good. It's here where the work begins. The first thing is to change this device EUI. Remember I warned about trying to change this on the M dot device, don't. So modify it here inside TTN. You can reveal the secret app key by pressing this small eye icon. This is where you may notice a confusing array of naming conventions. Click on settings to reveal this more useful page. Although this is optional, add a description of this device setting. Now we can correct the device EUI that we could not enter earlier. The device ID from the M dot needs to be copied and forced into the device EUI. Enter it and press the green save button to return to the overview. With the device EUI corrected, we now need to copy the allocated application EUI right. and the application key across to the M dot. As if all these names are not confusing enough, there is a difference between the naming convention used on the Things Network and the M dot. A lazy route is to go to the bottom of the page and this example code area. We need to copy the app EUI to the network ID on the M dot and the app key to the network key on the M dot. Click on the terminal screen and delete these characters from the copy and paste we did earlier on the device ID and add the command exactly as seen here. AT plus NI equals zero comma and copy and paste the app EUI over. The details should be reflected in confirmation. And then enter the key. AT plus NK equals zero comma and copy and paste the app key over. Again, it's confirmed. Double check by entering AT ampersand V. And there we are for comparison. Enter AT ampersand W if you want to save these settings. Just in case you need to cross-reference the names used in the Things Network and the M dot, then here they are. I'll stick them in the notes down below. Everything should now be copied. So on the device, enter AP plus join and 
There we are. And all this is in real time. The Things Network shows the green status and the text is confirmed on the node. Successfully joined network. Use anti ampersand V to review the changes made in the M dot. The network session key and the data session keys have been updated during the join process. Decoding the terminology, these are known as the network session key and the app session key. Is it clear now? A useful command is AT plus NJS, which returns a 1 to confirm the ongoing connection. But let's test it properly by sending data. Data from the node or device goes up to the gateway and from the application back down to the node. Well, down from the cloud, if that's an aid memoir. Entering some code into this download causes the green confirmation flag to appear for a second, but nothing here is downloaded to the node. Waiting does not reveal any activity. In the real world, IoT needs to save power. Nodes spend most of their time sleeping, not even in receive mode. Downloaded data is therefore stored until we know that the device is active. And that must be once it's just sent some data. Let's do that by entering AT plus send. And why not? Yes, hello world. Bang! Activity at both ends. Confirmation here as downloaded data is displayed and the OK is for the transmission. And at the Things Network, we can click on the data to reveal the log for the device. Six entries for immutable my node. Reading from the bottom, the activation at 10.09.52, the scheduled download of AABBCC at 10.10.50, and the result of the send, and the hello world in ASCII code. Clicking on these twirl downs reveals the additional metadata that's transmitted along with the data itself. On this upload, the meta shows the time and date and the frequency used. The fact that it is a LoRa packet and it was sent with a spreading factor of 12. These blocks confirm the same packet was received by two gateways, B827 and 0008 and 0080. This is not unusual for the system, which has to know how to deal with duplicates. We will cover all of this in the next video. What we won't cover is a connection using ABP, which Multitech annoyingly refer to as a manual connection. But given that this was so easy and OTAA has superior security, I don't see the need for covering ABP. So, flush with success, I bid you farewell until the next video.